AMD screws up even more. Tesla finally giving you a round steering wheel. Imagine it in 2022. And even NVIDIA's partners say that their cards are overpriced. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today we're going to be talking all about an actual issue with AMD's 7600X CPUs that you can find in some firmware updates that you may or may not probably want to hold off on because it can actually disable some of your cores. This is being found in an Agisa firmware update that is disabling cores on the 7600X because the 7600 X comes into variants of either a single CCD or a dual CCD. We talked about this back when the 7000 series launched that the dual CCD is a little bit worse because there's increased latency and AMD could make single CCD, but they don't. It's not a huge issue. Honestly, you're probably not going to even notice it except for when a firmware update like this doesn't know how to distinguish between the two and is actually causing cores to be disabled on the 7600X. So what otherwise wouldn't have been a problem could potentially result in you losing a little bit of performance on your actual chip. According to the reports, the new firmware locks down core zero, making it so that things are less likely to perform at full spec. This is something you should not update to. You would have to manually do it. So at the current moment, don't even touch it. A fix is on the way if you've already. Oh boy, don't do it. Okay, you should get a new firmware in a couple of weeks. And just, just in the meantime, enjoy, you know, not having having that extra <laughs> core. You just, you didn't need it. Five cores is all you get, says AMD. Shut up, Siri. But that dual versus single CCD issue slash discussion moves on into the engorged chips that AMD announced last week, the 7000 X3D setups. And we have found based on AMD talking with more press that the 7950 X3D and 7900 X3D will only have that level three 3DV cache on one of the CCDs. It's not actually gonna be spread across the whole chip and instead is going to have to be accessed from one side or another, which would mean the cores that aren't on the same CCD would actually end up having to have higher latency accessing it. Now, this could potentially not be a practical problem because AMD could work this out in something like the drivers or in the firmware to make sure that this is not an issue, kind of like Intel did with the E cores and P cores and Intel Thread Director. But considering we're still having issues with AMD's drivers and their firmware and their BIOS, we could run into problems. So that's all I'm saying. It's also being speculated that one of the reasons AMD might be doing this is that if Intel somehow catches up to the X3D chips, which I don't even think the 13900KS is actually even going to do, but if it did, then they could launch you know, the 7950X3D Plus, where it has 3D vCache on both of the chips, and that way it would be faster. So, uh, you know, good news, bad news all around, but in case you want the X3D chips, you're gonna have to look for a new box. Look at it, this is the new one. It's got a little 3D vCache badge. That's what you're gonna see. Also, we're finding out based on the product listings that AMD has put on their page that the chips are gonna have lower operating temperatures than their non-X3D counterparts, and actually even lower temperatures than the 5800X3D. So you can see the TJ Maxx on the 7950X is 95 degrees Celsius, the 7950X, X3D is 89 degrees Celsius and the 5800X3D was 90 degrees Celsius. So it's a little tricky. Also, when being asked about overclocking and what can these X3D ch chips do, AMD's being really kind of finicky with their words and not trying to communicate very clearly, which kind of seems to be a pattern as of late, which a lot of you got a little salty with me for the fact that I was calling AMD out on their bad response to the 7900 XTX cooler situation. And a lot of you pointed me towards this interview, which came out after I filmed Hot News between Scott Herkelman and Gordon Ung at PC World, who I absolutely love. I've done a live stream with Gordon. He's a great guy. I love PC World, but it proved my point in that AMD is relying on others to disseminate the information that they need to be communicating directly to their customers. And even though as of the time of filming, that PC World video has 90 to 95,000 views on it, those aren't necessarily the people who bought the cards who are affected. Just because you disseminate the information in a YouTube video does not mean you're doing right by the customers. I purchased the 7900 XTX directly from AMD stores. Even if there is a small chance of this being a problem, 
problem, which what we're finding out, it's several batches affecting thousands of cards. Even if they call, claim that to be a small percentage, we found out that AMD was planning on releasing 100,000 cards towards the end of Q4 last year. So that could still be a lot of cards. The fact that I, as an XTX purchaser from AMD directly, have gotten no notification of them what of what the process would be, of what I should do if I'm seeing irregular attempts is a failure on their part as a company to communicate what the problems are with their product. And the fact that they are relying on other people to provide that information like PC World is exactly the issue. The interview is also really good because uh, they kind of eat a little bit of crow for the fact that they called Nvidia out for like their power connectors. Also their benchmarks were bad. And so they said that they'll try to do better. Uh, we'll see, you know, I just, if AMD is not going to the customers directly and is instead talking to YouTubers and tech outlets, they are missing the mark and they're only satisfying the voices, not the customers. And that's what I draw an exception with. Not the fact that necessarily AMD isn't doing everything they possibly can. It's that they're not talking to the customers. My thousand dollars with AMD, if I wasn't plugged in, I would just be like, why does this thing suck? Why is it so hot? And I wouldn't know what the recourse is. And some people even tried to reach out to AMD, had bad problems with their customer support. How are they supposed to know? Yeah, oh, now they figured it out. Go contact them again. I'm just not a fan with how AMD has been playing their cards with all of this stuff. They've been obfuscating a lot of information. They haven't actually been clear with the customer and it's not something that I think we should accept just because you think they're the underdog, just because you like to accept what AMD gives you. They should be called out just as much as Nvidia or Intel for shenanigans that they pull. And the shenanigan of the 7900 XTX and not informing customers is one that I will sit here, I'll die on this hill. That's, that's where I'm at. Leave your rage comments down below and we can uh, have a civil discussion about it. I hear, I hear you that you think that I'm anti AMD. I just want to say, hey, do better. Email me. I'm a customer. I paid you my hard-earned money, AMD. Just let me know what to do if there is a problem, and then we'll be all good. And we're going to be all good with crypto stocks. It's time to check that out. Bitcoin's up not a, not a whole lot. It's just below $17,000. Ethereum's up not a whole lot to be at twelve seventy, dollars And Dogecoin is up not a whole lot to be at $0.7.2. Cents. Tesla on Friday closed up 2.47% to be at 113 again, staving off double digits. And in case you want your digits to hold on to a full circle, well, guess what? Tesla's got that for you now. One of the big controversies with the refresh Model S and X is the fact that they had a yoke steering wheel, which based on all of the reviews that I saw, most people were like, you get used to the yoke. The thing you do not get used to is the fact that everything is a capacitive button on the steering wheel. So uh, Tesla just making everything worse, giving you a round steering wheel, but still keeping the capacitive buttons because of course you want to accidentally hit your blinker while you're turning the wheel because you just you don't have a stock for it anymore. It's a $700 upgrade in case you want that in case you want the top half 700 bucks friends enjoy that but you know what that's not really a good deal i'm gonna say that right now but i know what some good deals are reese has them for you hey welcome back to ft deals to bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet hope you guys had a fantastic weekend it is a new week with new deals which are newer so let's jump straight into it with a logitech g pro wireless gaming mouse the official league of legends version is going for only 49.99 dollars 99 which is 62 percent off for an absolutely amazing gaming mouse and one of the games. But on the flip side, we have a budget buster with a Silicon Power 32 gig kit of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz at CL16, going for only $65.97, which is 45% off. And then lastly, we have this Peladin Gaming RTX 3060 Ti or Ti or however the heck you want to say it. Now, graphics card deals are always kind of iffy because it's $210 off its listed price. However, it is still coming in under MSRP for a white graphics card if you're trying to color match your system. So I decided to put it in. And like always, you can find the links to these deals and more in the video description. Until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. Look at him, man. Look at him. Donkey, donkey. I don't know why I went with a punny voice there, but you know what? MSI went with a snarky voice in their tweet with regards to what they think of Nvidia's pricing on their GPUs. The tweet has since been deleted, but it just, it's a good indication of where we are right now. MSI tweeting out like a towering pillar. The NVIDIA GeForce 4070 Ti is now on sale at our MSI store. Experience the power of the Ada Loveless architecture at a cost of not as bad as 4080. Here's the link. That is some just passive aggressive shade at the price point of the 4080. Honestly, the 4070 Ti is still overpriced. However, not as egregious as NVIDIA went with the 4080 and MSI Gaming USA 
they decided to call them out for it. They got rid of the tweet, so you know they probably got a, you know a little wrist slap from Nvidia. But AMD has gone ahead and updated all their website for their graphics cards now that the 4070 Ti is out, talking about how the 7900 XT is the fastest GPU under 900 bucks. Look at all these benchmarks compared to the 4070 Ti. Is it worth that extra hundred bucks to get the 7900 XT? Depends on whether or not you want to work with you know buggier drivers, etc. <laughs> Oh, sorry, excuse me. The NVIDIA fanboy was coming out for a second there. Also updating that they have the fastest GPU under $1,000 with the XTX being compared to the 480. The XTX makes a lot of sense. I think the XT makes less sense. 4070 Ti makes more sense than the 4080. The 4080 makes no sense whatsoever. Why wouldn't you just spring for the 4090 at that point, etc.? But one of the things that we were hearing about MSI and one of the Contra or conspiracy theories that I posited a while ago is MSI was not selling any single reference card for the 7900 series GPUs. And it was just kind of out in the open. When are we going to get an AMD GPU from MSI? Are they taking over EVGA supply? Are they trying to get in good with Daddy Green? Is there, are they going to be Nvidia's Jensen's new best boy? Well, it turns out after the tweet and CES uh, where they showed off that they will have custom editions of the 7900 XT GPUs. You can see here, there's a classic Gaming X Trio. They're calling it the classic. Neat. They should have a couple of others coming at some point, but you do at least get one GPU for the 7900 XTX from MSI and you get no more hot news from me because it's it's a Monday. I was pooping. I was pooping. That's a reference. See you tomorrow.